For what purpose does the gentleman from Florida rise? I said, no. the gentlewoman from Florida. Stand up. Stand up. Put the stand flag. Right. Right. Stop that. Hey. Uh, the gentlewoman is not recognized. Colleagues, no, I'm going to. The House will be in order. Per per All members are reminded to observe decorum. Speakers, speakers are reminded to address the chair. And pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, the unfinished business is the vote on the passage of H.R. 8034. for aid to Ukraine and maybe uh, too long. Why you decided to do it right now? Uh, listen, the, the House had a lot of important work to do here. We had to get the government funded in our appropriations process. We had to uh, reauthorize uh, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. We had a lot of important measures that had to be done, and we got to this as quickly as we could. Um, this is a, an important matter. I think it's, it's timely. I think you've heard from leaders around the world, including in Ukraine, that this is um, this is being done on a timely basis, and, and the House had to have the time to deliberate and, and do this in the right manner. Um, I, I think we, we did our work here, and I think uh, history will judge it well. Mr. Okay, so we saw what, we saw what happened with this vote. We saw your amendment go down. We saw your all your frustration with Mike Johnson. So is today the day you're going to call for the vote seeking his ouster? I'm actually going to let my colleagues go home and hear from their constituents because I think people have been too obsessed uh, with, with voting for foreign wars and the murder industry uh, here in America to actually understand how angry Americans are. Um, when you have the strongest, loudest voices uh, in, Republican, in the Republican movement and grassroots, furious, calling for Mike Johnson to be vacated. Uh, the people here, my, my colleagues, have not heard the message. So I'm looking forward for them to go home on hearing, hearing from the folks back at home. But this is the sellout of America today. When we had members of Congress in there waving the Ukrainian flag on the United States House of Representatives floor, um, while we're doing nothing to secure our border, I think every American in this country sh should be furious. It, it's, who's going to vote for these people? How, how can you vote for these people? They don't serve our country. Are Republicans you deserve to call a vote on a motion to vacate eventually. I, I just I don't think you were listening very well. No, you said uh, you wait for your constituents, okay, but will you ever? To well, I, vote? But, I mean, given what you said, do Republicans deserve to be in the majority? That's up to the people, because this is the third betrayal by Mike Johnson. He, he delivered a two-part omnibus, funded the Department of Justice, 91 federal indictments against President Trump, funded the FBI that raided Mar-a-Lago, gave him a brand-new FBI building, funded Joe Biden's open border policies that are kill, killing Americans every single day. Then he, then he reauthorized FISA that spied on American citizens, spied on President Trump's campaign, and he voted against the warrant requirement, the same warrant requirement that he was for six months ago. And then he did this bullshit in here on the House floor, foreign war package that does nothing for America. I, it, it's, it's unbelievable. I, I'm, I'm thankful that America gets to see who this man is. I'm thankful that America gets to see who the people that voted for this is, uh, because this is the only way it's going to change. People why, have to see the truth. Why is this fight against Russia not worth it? Based on, based on what you just said, why is the fight against based Russia on what you just said, are you waiting to see if there will be more support in your conference before calling a motion to vacate? There, there is more support. It's growing. I've said from the beginning I'm going to be responsible with this. I support my majority. I support the majority next time. I do not support Mike Johnson. He's already a lame duck. If we had the vote today in our conference, he would not be speaker today. He's already a lame duck. He can't raise money. Everyone knows it. We know we can't win the majority next year without raising money. He can't be speaker. He doesn't have the vote. This is the process that just has to Are you going to talk to Donald? Are you going to raise this with Donald Trump? What are, what are you waiting for to drop this motion? This was the last big legislative push before September, mm -hmm. something that you have been against for months now. What are you waiting for on triggering this motion? You know, there's some people that are, that are rash and irresponsible and do things like what happened last time. I'm not that person. 
I didn't come here to Congress to, to actually hurt uh, our institution, hurt our majority. Um, I'm handling this the right way, and so I'm allowing the process to happen. The American people are going to have their way. Our voters are going to make their voices heard uh, to my colleagues in the, in the party. And like I said, the vote was held today. Mike Johnson is a lame duck. Are you, you going to bring this to He's done. Are you going to talk to Trump about this? Are you going to bring this to Trump? Are you gonna... Three is the magic number. If he called the motion to vacate, he's going to lose, absent Democrats saving him like they did today. But if they do that, he's really become tainted at that point. Why is, why is he tainted if Democrats kill this on the first procedural vote? Because I don't think it's ever been done that Democrats would save him. The question would then be the same question we have today, which is, what did he trade? We weren't in those negotiations that went on for hours while the Rules Committee was in recess the uh, day before yesterday. What was he trading with the Democrats in exchange to maintain power long enough to pass this foreign aid bill. We don't know there, and we won't know if he crosses the aisle to get Democrats. I mean, by the way, this is something that Kevin McCarthy could have done but did not do. He didn't cross the aisle, cut deals. He did the he Fiscal did. Responsibility and Act. And you know, the fiscal, spending act sorry, the to remain Speaker, he did not, which was your question, I think. Uh, he didn't cross the aisle and try to get Democrats to save him. Uh, Congressman, uh, Will you commit to bringing a motion to vacate on the floor if Speaker Johnson doesn't resign? Um, I, I'm pretty sure one will come to the floor uh, if he doesn't resign at some point. But does it, have you guys, have you, to avoid I, But have you missed your moment? I mean, look, this was like one of the big last moments here before we get into the fall on <laughs> legislating, right? And then now you're going into recess, and the, the anger may subside among some folks. Maybe not you, but some folks. Have you missed your moment? So let me say what I think you're thinking. Um, so he betrayed us three times. He had three big things he had to do to, uh, to betray us and the American people. Number one, he had to spend more than Nancy Pelosi on an omnibus, and he shoved that through without 72 hours notice. That was the first infraction. Second infraction was reauthorizing FISA with no warrant. And he, he worked hard to make sure Americans don't get a warrant if they're being spied on. That was the second betrayal. To your point, today the pressure cooker is, is at a very uh, high local maximum because he has taken away every bit of leverage we had to do something on the border by sending a hundred billion dollars overseas. So your question is, what's left? He's already screwed you and there's nothing to screw you on again. Well, he's going to cause us to lose the majority at this point. He's completely demotivated our base. He's uh, disappointed us in the conference. and. Everybody out in America will acknowledge this, but they won't acknowledge it here in D.C. yet. He can't be speaker again. Like, you can talk about, will the Democrats save him from a motion to vacate, all that sort of stuff. Do we want to go through trying to replace him midterm? You know, those are questions that are up in the air, but one that is without doubt is he can't win on January 3rd, 2025. And I don't like that it's this way, but the Speaker of the House is the fundraiser in chief for the majority party and tasked with keeping and growing the majority by raising money. He is not able to raise money because he is the lame duck. We need to have somebody in that position that can raise the money and grow our majority instead of losing it. He's not that guy, and that's why, even though he's betrayed us three times and we can't see anything that... I'm trying not to laugh, but um, uh, Don Fartioni has given, uh, well, he's given Rudy Giuliani a good run for his... Here's the thing. These clowns at Fox News, if this was Biden, they would be going on non-stop making jokes, etc. But because it's Trump, they're trying to pretend that his SHIT don't stink. Well, it, it does. Ask Diane Feinstein, or the late Diane Feinstein. So today... So today we're here in a bipartisan fashion to show leadership in an effort to end the senseless, end the senseless. Crazy thing is, we haven't actually even started into the hearing. The, the, the late night shows were enjoying themselves with Trump snoring only. Uh, the farting is just going to, wow, roll it out. What? What? Oh my God, I was having the most terrible dream <laughs> that I had to read something. Trump appears to be sleeping. His head keeps dropping down and his mouth goes slack. 
followed by Trump has apparently jolted back awake, noticing the notes his lawyer passed him several minutes ago. <laughs> if Biden is sleepy, Joe, I guess that makes you Dozo the Clown, huh? Donald Trump, the former president of the United States, has been known to exhibit unusual behavior in courtrooms. Some people claim that he farts audibly and falls asleep during proceedings. While it may sound humorous, such actions can have serious implications, especially in a formal setting like a courtroom. Trump's flatulence and falling asleep can be disruptive and disrespectful to the legal process. Farting can be disruptive to those present, including judges, lawyers, jurors, and spectators. It can create an unprofessional and uncomfortable environment that detracts from the seriousness of the proceedings. On the other hand, falling asleep can be seen as a sign of disrespect and disinterest in the legal process, potentially jeopardizing his case. To address these issues, it is crucial for Trump to acknowledge the importance of court decorum and behave appropriately. This involves maintaining proper etiquette, showing respect for the court, and adhering to the rules and expectations of the legal system. Trump should strive to be attentive, engaged, and considerate of others in the courtroom. Additionally, Trump may benefit from seeking guidance or support from legal professionals or advisors who can help him navigate the courtroom environment and understand the significance of his actions. By taking steps to improve his behavior and demonstrate respect for the legal process, Trump can present himself in a more more favorable light and avoid causing unnecessary disruptions in court. In conclusion, while the idea of Trump farting and falling asleep in court may seem amusing, it is important to recognize the potential consequences of such behavior. By prioritizing professionalism, respect, and attentiveness in the courtroom, Trump can present himself more positively and avoid undermining his legal proceedings. Now you may think, well, this is just something Trump did today because he was in court, bored, uh, the fact that he's in serious trouble. Uh, no, uh, Omarosa, who used to actually be around Trump quite a lot, this, this guy's got a history of falling asleep and just going... Pfft. I will tell you that I've had to sit through long ceremonies with Donald Trump. I've had to sit next to him during long church services or different policy events, and Donald Trump cannot focus nor can he sit still for very long. In fact, we used to build our events specifically to address his attention deficit. We would break up the event so that he could be stimulated and not fall asleep. We would slide him different information or news articles that he could read while these long proceedings were going on. Anything to keep him focused so that he wouldn't just get up and walk out. That garbage can orbit of Donald Trump. There's no doubt that he's nervous. <laughs> What'd you do? What'd you do? On Tuesday, April 4th, 2023, Donald Trump entered a Manhattan courtroom and pled not guilty to 34 crimes. Russia.